Hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a faithful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day to give him thanks. Because what he has done for you and what he has got you out of. And there's not one person on this planet called earth can never say that Jesus has never got you out of a situation or a jam that we cause on ourselves. We didn't know how we was going to get out of that situation because we are to blame that what took place. But all of a sudden, even though we was in the wrong for our action, but the Lord showed us grace and mercy and he bailed us out. Not one time. He don't did it more than one time for us. And each and every day is a day that's to give thanks and praise and glory because a lot of us right now today, we wouldn't be here right now today if it wasn't for him. We'd have been messed up a long time ago if it wasn't for Jesus. If he didn't have a perfect plan for you, if he didn't have a purpose for you, or even he was done with you, you wouldn't be breathing right now today. Did you give him thanks for that? Did you give him praise for that? Or did you forget about it? See me, I forget about things like that. That's why praise, praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he loves every last one of us. And he has us in the palm of his hands. And he is working everything God to his perfect will. Yes, he is. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters to always praise his holy name. Not because you want something, not because you don't need of anything, but just to do it because you're in love with Jesus. Do it because you are committed to him. Do it because you are dedicated to him. Do it because he's your first love. Do it because you can't do it, you can't make it without Jesus. Praise should be necessary in every last one of our life. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home, into your life, or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. Please return back to, please return back to your first love. His arms are open wide. God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads and let us all pray together as one body in Christ. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me your thanks. Give me your praise. Give me your glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you're guiding us and directing us. We thank you, Father God, how you're ordering our steps. We thank you, Father God, for the love, God, that you continue to pour down on us, God. We thank you, Father God, for how patient you are with us, God. We thank you, Father God, because you're working everything, God, Father God. Oh, Father God, your word tells, tells us that we need to trust you at all times. And even though, Father God, it's difficult, even though, Father God, we're going through a frustrating season right now, and even though, Father God, we're going through some difficulties and hardships, but, Father God, we're still holding on to you, Father God. We're still trusting on you, Father God, because your words are true and your promises are everlasting. But, Father God, we just ask you, Father God, for you to reach down on us right now today and touch us right now today, Father God. Lift us up right now today, Father God. Because, Heavenly Father God, we need you right now. We need you in a mighty and a major way right now. Father God, we cannot do this by ourselves, Father God. Father God, we're hurting down here, Father God. We're suffering down here, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to surround us with your angels right now today, Father God. Just speak a word to us right now today, God. Lift our spirits up right now today, Father God. Just to whisper in our ear right now today, Father God. Just to let us know, Father God, that it's already all right. That you already took care of that problem for us, God. 
Let them know, let us know, Father God, that we can just relax in your words and relax in your promises right now today. Oh, Father God, we are praying, we're asking, Father God, for confirmation right now. We are praying and we ask in your name, Father God, for discernment right now. We pray right now for today, Father God, for a sign right now today, Father God. Send us an angel right now today, God. Oh, Father God, it's not too hard for you. It's not too difficult for you, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we put our faith, we put our trust, we put our hope into your hands right now. And Father God, we know it's not too hard and it's not too difficult for you, Father God. And Father God, we standing on your words right now. We stand in your promise and we stand in no faith, God, that it's already done. And Father God, we love you. We trust you. You are everything. Let the, let the body of church say, come together and say, amen. Amen and amen. My brothers, my sisters, the Lord knows it's been a long time. He know how long that you've been hurting. He know how long that you've been suffering. He know how long that you've been going through what you've been going through. He know how long that you've been going through this little difficult situation. He know how long that you've been going through your drought in your season. He know how long. And I know right now today, my brothers and sisters, it's all easy said and done. And I know right now today, my brothers and sisters, that you want to give up. I know right now today, my brothers and sisters, that you want to throw in the towel. I know right now today, my brothers and sisters, you want to just say, you know what, forget it. I can't do it no more. And I know that you want to walk away. But it's easy to walk away, my brothers and sisters. It's easy to throw in the towel right now today, my brothers and sisters. It's easy to turn your back on Jesus right now today. That's the easy part. And right now, you can't even imagine how close you are to the victory line. You can't even imagine how close you are to, to receive your crown. You can't even imagine how close you are to receiving the gifts from Jesus. And right now today, I know that you're close because I'm going through the same thing that you're going through, my brothers and sisters. It's, it's, it's not easy. Yes, it has been hard. Yes, it has been difficult. But one thing I know, change is going to come. Change has to come. You can always count on that. You can always depend on that. You can always rely on that. Because the word of God says, trust him at all times. And Father God, that is exactly what we've been doing. We've been trusting you, Father God. And each and every day, when we don't see nothing happen, we don't see nothing coming our way, it seems like that we're getting disappointed. No, he have us exactly what he, what he needs us at right now today. To hold on him a little bit more. To trust him a little bit more. To seek him a little bit more. To pray to him a little bit more. To praise him a little bit more. To worship him a little bit more. To pour out our heart to him a little bit more. God is too faithful, my sisters. God is too faithful, my brothers. To fail us. God is too faithful to even turn his back on us. God is too faithful to sit there and say, I'm done with y'all. I don't have enough. He wants to hold on to his unchangeable hands right now today, my sisters. He wants us to hold on to his unchangeable hands right now today, my brothers. Because he's telling me right now today to let you know that change is going to come. That all your hard work is already paid off. That whatever it is that he's starting your life is already done. It's already completed. Whatever it is that he promised you is going to come. And it will not delay and it will not be late. Whatever dreams or vision that the Lord has shown you, it is manifesting each and every day. But we got to hold on and we got to say we know that change is going to come. God is saying a miracle is coming your way. A blessing is coming your way. Hallelujah. A breakthrough is coming your way. So you have to suffer a little bit. We got to go through the hardship a little bit we had to go through the difficulties a little bit we had to go through the storm a little bit but you weathered it all my sisters you weathered it all my brothers see a lot of people can't even say what you can say a lot of people would have been tapped out a long time ago a lot of people would have been through in the town a long time ago a lot of people would have been walked out a long time ago but God was testing your faith alone when you was going through the storm God was testing your faith when you was going through the suffering God was testing your faith when you was 
going through the hardship. God was testing your faith when you was going through them difficulties. He said, they got my son right there that I can trust. He said, they got my daughter right there that I can trust. Because God said he knew what you can handle. He would have never gave it to you if you can handle it. He gave it to you because why? He was going to see you through it, my brothers and sisters. Not because you can handle it. He said, I'm going to see my son through this pain. I'm going to see my daughter through this suffering. I'm going to see my son through this, this difficulty. I'm going to see my daughter through these hardships right now. God was with us the whole time as Job. When Job was going through what he was going through, Job was looking for Jesus from the north side, from the east side, from the west and the south. And Job was calling out the Lord's name, but the Lord never answered. But Job didn't realize that God was with him the whole time through all the pain that Job had to go through, through all the suffering that Job had to go through, through all the hardship that Job had to go through. And everything that Job had to go through, Jesus was right there with him. And Jesus made sure that Job was going to come out on top. And Jesus is saying that he's going to make sure that you come out on top, my brothers and sisters. Because he said change is going to come. It has your name on it. It has, it has your location right now today. He said change is going to come. He said you can count on that. You can depend on that. And you can rely on that. He know how long you've been waiting. He know how long you've been right there praying for things to happen your way. He knows it's making you feel uncomfortable right now today. He knows all of that. Don't think for a second that the Lord is looking over you. Hallelujah. Don't think for a second that God has bypassed you. Don't think for a second that God is no way he ain't got time for you. Because he's going to always make time for you. You can trust and believe that even though it might seem like that, it's not. Now, I know that the enemy is telling you that God is not going to come through. I know the enemy is putting all kinds of things in your head, making you think a certain way. But God said, don't you listen to that. God said, keep your eyes focused on me and trust me at all times. And he said, I'm going to make a way because I am I am a provider. I am a healer. And God said, I got you right there in the palm of his hands. And he is working everything out. You best believe it, my brothers. You best believe in my sisters. I know it's been a long time since you've seen the sun to shine on you. But God said that sun is about to shine on your finances right now. That sun is about to shine on your dreams right now. That sun is about to shine on your marriage, on your relationship, on your children, on your business, on your dreams. Whatever it was, it's been dark. And God said, let there be light. And God said that it's going to be light because why? As long as you continue to walk with Jesus, he is the light. He is the truth. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And he said that you can always count on him. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. God got it already orchestrated. He already got it worked out. He already spoke to the people who's going to meet you. He already spoke to the people who's going to help you. He already spoke to the people that you're going to, he going to, he going to line you up with. It's already ordained, my brothers. It's already ordained, my sisters, because change is going to come. And I know you've been looking at everybody else getting theirs, getting theirs, but God says yours is a little bit more different from theirs. Your was a little bit more heavier than this. Jesus said, I had to get, I had to tend to them first because I already knew if I blame my eye on them, that's going to leave me. But God said, he knew your strength. He knew your faith. He knew what you was about. So that way he made you wait just a little bit more longer because he knew that you can handle the pain. He knew that you can handle the suffering. He knew that you can handle the hurt, even though that you didn't think that you can handle it. But God said, I created you. I made you. I knew who you was before you was even born, born, that's what the word of God tell us in Jeremiah 1 and 5. That's why God allowed you to go through what you had to go through. He was testing you out like a test, like he was testing a new car, even though he knew how to drive. He knew the gears to shift. And God say he knew. He knew you. But he had to test you before he gave you that type of power. He said he knew you, but he had to test you before you received the crown of life. He said he knew you, but he had to test you to make sure that you were never going to leave him. He said he knew you, but he had to test you to make sure how strong you really were, even though he already knew. He just had to test you a little bit. 
And even though we was crying out to him, and he said, even though I didn't respond back to you, he said, I was not annoying you. He said, I was listening to you the whole time. And as I was listening to you, I was working things out. I was setting the table up for you. I was setting the stage up for you. He said, now, but the curtain is about to pull back. He said, now it's going to be lights, camera, and action. And I hope that you're ready because he is telling me to tell you right now today, change is about to come. Change is about to hit knock on your front door. Change is about to call your telephone. Change is about to hit your carrier service. Change is about to hit your mailbox. Change is about to hit your email. Change is about to hit your text message. Get ready because a miracle has your name on it. A breakthrough have your name on it. A blessing, it has your name on it, my brothers and sisters. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. Can you please turn your Bibles to Second Peter? Chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 8. That's 2 Peter, chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 8. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. The Word of God tells us, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some of us keeping us understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The Lord is not slow at all in keeping his promises. As some understand slowness, he is patient, which means he's been he's been studying. That means he's getting you ready. That means he's preparing you for it. Because what you were asking for, what you've been praying for, what you've been waiting on, is it going to be more than what you asked for, more than what you bargained for, more than what you even prayed for. That's why he had to be patient with you. He had to, he had to take you to the fire to prepare you. He had to set the table up because he knew how many enemy was against you. He had to cut some people out of your life because some people was only for the free ride. Some people was not even there to clap for you, even root for you. God said he had to remove some people out of your life because some people was only going to be a leech. He had to get rid of them. It was some things that God had to do on his behalf just for you. He said, what kind of father who I can be? If I was to give that kind of blessing when I knew people were going to take advantage of you because he knew your heart. He know how loving you are. He know how kind you are. So he had to prepare you to get you ready because he said, this is your big dance. This is your big day. This is your moment of life, my sisters. This is your moment of life, my brothers. He was not slow. He was just preparing you. He was getting you ready because this is the day that the Lord has made and every last one of should be glad and rejoice in it because he is telling me to tell you right now today, change. It's going to come. He ain't forgot about you. He just getting you ready. And he's telling me to tell you right now today, cameras, lights, action. This is your moment for life. Change is about to come. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this word for today. And I know he's been waiting for a long time. But God said a thousand years is only one day to me. God said he don't need a whole 365 days to do it. He don't need one month to do it. He don't even need a couple of weeks to do it. He don't need a, he don't even need a couple of days. He said, I just need one day, one second, one minute, one hour, and I can change it all around. Get ready in one day, in one minute, one second, one hour. Your change, your miracle is coming your way. I don't know who this word for today, but somebody need to get ready. Somebody need to buckle up right now today. Somebody need to get their popcorn and their soda pop right now today. Because God is about to show up and he's about to show out in your life because your miracle is here. Your miracle has arrived. And if you know the Lord is talking to you and you know this word is speaking to you, say thank you, Jesus, right now. Somebody need to give Jesus some praise right now today. Somebody need to shout out glory and hallelujah. Lord, I know that you're talking to me because I've been waiting for a long time and I know change has to come. And guess what? It already came. It's already here. It's already arrived for you, my brothers and sisters. And they have your name on it. Amen. Amen. And if you like what you heard today, go ahead and hit Jesus like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life. 
to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him, always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving me to say, I love y'all stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name, and change is about to come. Stay blessed. Amen.